When I was younger, I lived in the United States, up in the north near Lake Ontario, and luckily enough we had access to a remote, secluded cabin right on the shores of the lake. Now, this wasn't necessarily a scary place, but it was extremely isolated and these were the days before smartphones or anything of the like. So, if anything had happened to us out there, I tried to think what the outcome would have been, but as you can tell, I'm here, alive and safe to this day. So why am I telling you? Well, that's the theme of today's story, one I think you're going to love just as much as I did reading for you. So my dear friends, sit back and relax with your favourite drink, because it's time to listen. I felt my head jolt up with urgency, as I barely stopped myself from nodding off at the wheel. As a small amount of adrenaline stung through my skin, I gave myself a few slaps to the face to make sure I toughed out the remainder of our journey. My fiancé and I, we'll call her Rachel, were on hour 17 into our drive to her family's cabin in northern Minnesota for a small vacation. I glanced over with heavy eyelids to see her fast asleep in the passenger seat. The last two hours of the trip were spent through desolate back roads and towns that consisted of a hundred people and a lone stoplight. I could feel myself immersing into the solitude as the roads began to be labelled by numbers instead of names. I turned onto the long stretch of road that wound through the forest and led to their cabin. In two miles, your destination will be on the left, Siri spoke to me, cutting into the silence. The car slowly trudged over the undeveloped road, as large chunks of gravel crunched and tumbled beneath the wheels, while towering pine trees loomed above to block out the stars. At last, we had arrived, and I was so exhausted that I considered just sleeping right there in the driveway. I'd never been to this place before. But it was very cosy at first glance. It's not one of those decked out cabins that rich people buy, but it had three bedrooms and sat just offshore to a small 1100 acre lake. We quickly unloaded everything and collapsed onto a bed that smelled older than time. Though we were completely beat, we were excited to spend some time away from it all. The sun lit our room early the next morning, and I was filled with a huge sense of relief when, out of routine, I checked my phone to see there was no service. <sighs> Nobody could bother us, even if they tried. Rachel offered to drive to the nearest town to get groceries, so I could settle in and check out the cabin. I rifled through hundreds of dusty books that sat on shelves in the living room, and pulled out a dozen or so board games as I excitedly planned our time ahead. I made my way outside and onto the pier that stretched out into the lake. A small boat lightly rocked in the water, and the dock creaked and groaned underneath my feet. I stared out at the lake, and finally felt the last of my anxiety dissipate. Since the drive to town was around a half hour, I figured I would set out onto the lake to do some fishing. A small island caught my eye, that sat close to the middle of the lake. It was maybe a hundred yards in diameter and was filled with dense trees and shrubs. Something about it drew me its way. I can't really describe it, but it was like it slowly sucked me towards it. The island had an almost eerie glow around it, like it wasn't really in the same world as ours. I anchored maybe fifty feet from the shore of it, and started casting. <laughs> it wasn't thirty seconds before I felt something hit. I nearly had it up to the boat, when I felt the tension release. Oh, shit, I thought. Must have got off the hook. But when I reached out to reapply the bait, I saw a fish dangling off the end of the line. An uneasy feeling washed over me when I saw it was completely mangled. It was nearly ripped in half, with tears all along what was left of its body. My first thought was, hmm, a bigger fish must have jumped on it. But I didn't feel any sort of struggle that would indicate such. Hmm, an otter, maybe. But again, 
I felt no struggle on it as I reeled it in. I shrugged it off and moved on to the opposite side of the island and resumed fishing. But again, the next thing I hooked suddenly stopped fighting and I pulled up a shredded fish carcass. This happened a few more times. I was just curious at this point as to what was causing this. I looked towards the island and felt such dread, like it was staring back at me. I slowly rowed myself away to another spot closer to the cabin and started to catch some fully intact fish, all the while taking brief glances at the island. After hauling in a decent-sized bass, I heard Rachel pull into the driveway so I decided to make my way back and try to forget about that experience. Over dinner, I casually brought up the island to Rachel. So, I saw there's an island in the middle of this lake. Have you ever gone out to it? I asked. Oh, that? No, my dad just told us not to go there. He said the land is still owned by the family of some woman who used to live there, she responded. Wait, someone used to live there? How? I asked. Yeah, he said there was a woman who had a house there. She owned some knick-knack shop in town till around 50 years ago when she died. She'd have to row to the dock every morning to her car, she explained. Oh, must have been a pain in the ass to get groceries there, I said with a laugh. Yeah, my dad said she was super creepy and they would sometimes catch her staring at them from the shore while they fished, she elaborated. <laughs> uh, well, that's just weird, I said, kind of laughing it off. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure none of that's real. I think it just told us those things to keep us from ever messing around over there, she said with a laugh of her own. The rest of the day was spent playing various board games, reading, and just lounging around the cabin. However, each time I passed the living room window, I felt that distinct feeling of being watched. Each time I would glance out to see that island looming in the distance. Curiosity was starting to nag at me, especially now that I was told there was a house sitting by itself, probably untouched for decades. A few days passed, and we spent our time doing more of the same. While relaxing like this was exactly what I needed, I couldn't get my mind off that island. I'd barely gotten any fishing done since my first trip onto the lake, as I always felt like something just didn't want me there. Well, I couldn't take it anymore. I decided that once Rachel fell asleep, I was going to row out there to check it out for myself. It was probably just some urban legend her dad had concocted to scare his kids. But... Well, part of me wanted it to be real. I sat up in bed reading, waiting for Rachel to fall asleep. She fell asleep faster than anybody I'd ever met, and could sleep through a hurricane, so I knew I wouldn't have to wait very long. She really was not a fan of anything creepy, and going to an abandoned house in the middle of the night was not something she would be interested in. I felt kind of bad doing this without telling her, but I knew she would protest. I grabbed my heavy-duty flashlight, a hunting knife, just in case, and, of course, my phone to record anything noteworthy. Rachel fell asleep within minutes of laying her head down, and after waiting for maybe twenty minutes to be safe, I turned out the lights and quietly made my way out of the cabin. It was dead quiet outside as I made my way down the dock. No frogs, crickets, or anything made a sound. I pushed off the dock and rode my way towards the island. Each dip of the oars into the water seemed so loud in the complete silence that the night held. I was so anxious to see if Rachel's dad's stories were true or just legend. Either way, there was something off about this island and I desperately wanted to see it for myself. I pulled up to it, and circled around for a minute. The moon was bright enough for me to see the shoreline, as I scanned for any spots that were clear enough for me to set anchor. 
Finally, I spotted a stump jutting out from the land that was partially submerged. The boat slowly drifted towards it as I grabbed a hold and hoisted myself onto land. I tied the rope to the stump and, after making sure it was secure, I clumsily stepped through the thick brush until I made my way onto what appeared to be a yard. I switched on my flashlight to see a disheveled home sitting in the very middle of the island. It stood two stories with rotting walls and a caved-in roof. Oh God, no fucking way, I thought to myself. There really is a house here. All of the windows were broken, and the entirety of the house was suffocated by an overgrowth of ancient vines. The trees were so dense around it that it blacked out the sky above as this house stood forgotten by time. I remembered to pull out my phone right then and there to capture anything I might find. I swept the beam of light over the house, and I hit record and made my way towards it. My feet crunched on fallen dead branches and leaves, and that sense of dread returned to me with a vengeance. I'd come this far, and wasn't going to turn back now. I shone the light on the front door that sat ajar. I shone my light through the openings where the windows used to be. And it was, well, quite eerie to say the least. Whoever lived here really must have owned a knick-knack shop or something, because dozens of, well, miscellaneous items were strewn across the floor, coated in years of thick dust. A box spring mattress looked as if it had been thrown across the room, as it sat partially upright against a decaying wall. I put my weight into the door, and it agonizingly creaked open, letting out decades of neglect. The air was dense and unforgiving, as I swept my phone all around to record all of these long-forgotten memories. Dozens of various trinkets, household tools, and ceramic animals covered the floors, as I carefully stepped over the abandoned piles. I shifted the light to one corner of the room, and felt my heart jump when I saw a pile of maybe a dozen baby dolls lying in a heap. I made my way towards them as the floor creaked and groaned. I was seriously starting to get the creeps, as I noticed it was significantly colder in this house than it was outside on the summer night. Some of the dolls were missing heads, while others had dirty and torn clothing on them. Right above the pile, I noticed a picture hanging on the wall. I blew off the thick coat of dust and went into a coughing fit as it blew directly back into my eyes and down my throat. When I came to, I saw it was one of those creepy old-timey photos of a family where nobody was smiling. Just vacant expressions staring back at me. There was a thirty-something-year-old woman holding a baby with two little boys sitting by her sides. I realized they were standing in front of the house that I was currently invading. I turned around, and my blood ran cold. Standing at the opposite edge of the room in a doorway was a small boy lit up in the beam of my flashlight. I jumped out of my skin and screamed as the light illuminated his figure. He was maybe seven or eight years old, with sandy blonde hair and deep brown eyes. The light in his face didn't even seem to bother him, as he stared straight through me. I recognized his face as one of the boys in the photograph just behind me. Sir, what are you doing here? The words slithered out of his mouth and up my spine, sending a cold shiver through my body. I sat there, dumbfounded, as I stammered at the ghostly figure. Can you help my brother? Please, sir. The boy spoke to me. I was speechless. The boy quickly turned and darted into the room behind him. I stood there for a moment, but realizing I had all of this on video made me see, well, dollar signs. 
This was the most incredible and terrifying thing I had ever witnessed. I took a deep breath, made sure my phone was still recording, and made my way into the room. I passed through the doorway and into a room that looked pristine. Clean floors, painted walls, and wooden rocking chairs. It even appeared that night had turned back into day, as the room looked dimly lit in early morning light. I spotted another child off in the corner, just sitting on the floor, looking away from me while the one who urged me into the room was leaning over something wrapped on a couch. I made my way towards him, and glanced over his shoulder to see a baby cuddled up in a blanket cocoon. He feels cold, sir. He hasn't made a sound in a long time, and we don't know what's wrong, the little boy said to me with sadness in his voice. The other child started rocking nervously, hands clenched around his legs as he formed into a ball. Can you help us, sir? The boy pleaded. The rocking child began to whimper and mumble under his breath. I'm sorry. I don't know what I can do to help. I spoke to him. Is your mother around? Can she help? I asked. It was at that moment that I heard a sound coming from up a staircase that I hadn't noticed before. It started out very faint, but as the sound gradually grew, I could make out the heartbreaking sound of a woman crying. The sound persisted until it was a full-fledged wail that was ringing throughout the house. The boy rocking in the other corner quickly rose and sprinted out of the room. Oh, you should leave, mister. She doesn't like visitors. At that moment, it was like something flipped a switch, and the once immaculate room was now dark and cluttered with disgusting furniture that was torn and rotting. The wailing from upstairs hadn't ceased, and I heard loud, vicious stomping on the floor above me rapidly make its way to the staircase and start the descent to the room I was in. I felt frozen in place as I shone the light down onto the couch to see a dirty, dust-caked doll laying there on a blanket. I looked back up at what sounded like a raging bull hit the bottom of the stairs and just stopped, along with the crying. I fell back and waited for what felt like hours for something to show itself. I tried to crawl backwards as my legs seemed to stop working. After what felt like an eternity, it started its way towards me and my heart Sunk. Thud. 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 Each pause between the steps was more suspenseful than the last. I sat there, hands shaking as my flashlight trembled with them. I tried to force myself to turn it off, but it was too late. I watched in horror as a figure dark as night, with long wispy hair and gangly limbs lumbered into the room. It seemed to stop and face me for a moment, and I could feel tears running down my face. After a brief pause, it made its way to the couch. It looked down at the old doll and stroked its head with long, bony fingers. It let its face collapse into its hands and it began sobbing once more. Same as before, it gradually grew louder and louder until it was nearly deafening. It picked up the doll and held it tight to its chest before letting out an ear-piercing scream of pure despair. I was somehow able to get enough of a grip and pull out my knife, but as I did, this thing's neck violently twisted towards me and postured up. It towered high above me, and its head nearly grazed the ceiling. At last, my legs found the strength I needed, and adrenaline kicked in. I stopped the video and pocketed my phone before making a dash for the door. 
I heard rapid, heavy stomps close the distance instantly, and I felt a tremendous force knock me through the doorway I had been running through. I frantically looked up, as my flashlight had fallen from my hands, and I saw the figure hurl itself through the beam of light emanating from wherever it had landed. It landed on me, and all the while a symphony of crying and screaming came from this thing. It stood over me as it pinned me to the ground with immense strength. I managed to shake my arm free, and I attempted to slash at its face with a knife, but it grabbed my wrist with such force that I felt it was going to snap my arm. It clenched its cold hands around mine, and slowly guided the knife down towards my stomach. I tried punching it with my now free hand as it slowly lifted my shirt and began running the blade down my abdomen. I screamed out in pain as it pierced my skin and I felt warm blood slide down my sides. My free hand frantically grasped for anything to use to defend myself with when I felt it go over a large piece of broken glass. Without hesitating, I grabbed it and struck this thing in the eye. It let out a horrible cry and fell off me as I managed to sprint out of the house and onto the boat. I could hear it crying that same mournful wail as I pushed the boat off and made it back to the cabin. I pulled in and tied the boat down before sprinting up to the house. But when I opened the door, I heard a horrible sound. That same crying was coming from somewhere inside of the cabin. It sounded muffled at first, but grew in volume as I approached our bedroom. I made my way to the door, and as I opened it, the crying ceased. All I saw was Rachel slumbering peacefully the way I had left her. I checked the closets and under the bed, as well as each room of the house, but could not find any sign of it. I dove under the covers and curled up tightly next to Rachel, my body still shaking in terror. I decided right there we were leaving the next day. I couldn't be here anymore. I don't know if it was the exhaustion or the result of high adrenaline wearing off, but I somehow found sleep after cowering under the covers for a while. Once asleep, a dream started to take form. It was me walking to the shore of the island. I could see our cabin in the distance, a small candle in the living room providing it enough light to be seen. However, I had no control over my movements. Whatever I was seeing through looked down at the water, dove in and began swimming furiously towards the cabin. All the way, I screamed for it to stop, but it only gained speed. It climbed onto the dock and sprinted at an unnatural speed. The earth seemed to shake beneath our feet. It opened the door to the cabin and slowed its pace. It carefully made its way through the living room, then down the hall. It stopped and looked right at the bedroom door. It creaked open the door and walked in. There I was sleeping like a baby. I watched its disgusting, monstrous fingers slowly reach down towards me before violently grabbing my throat. I jolted awake and immediately shook Rachel up. We have to go right now, I yelled out as she was still in a daze and half awake. What? She replied in a groggy tone. Pack everything, we're leaving now. I rushed her into the car and hastily threw everything I could find before speeding down the unpaved road and away from that place. Rachel groggily asked me what was wrong, but I couldn't seem to answer. I felt as though I was in shock and couldn't get any words to come out. It was then that I remembered the video. I'd gotten it all on video, I exclaimed, 
in my own head. I pulled out my phone and handed it to Rachel. Go to the videos and watch the most recent one, I told her. I don't understand. What am I looking at here? She said in an exhausted voice before handing me back the phone after watching for a few minutes. What? Please, babe, just watch it through, I pleaded with her. She mumbled something but was already asleep again. I didn't really care that she wouldn't see it now. I was just happy to be getting away from that place and back home. I stopped at a rest stop a few hours into the trip, and the sun had just finished rising. After making a trip to the bathroom and grabbing a few sodas from a vending machine, I decided to take a look at the video for myself. Either Rachel was just half asleep, or the video didn't come out as clear as I'd hoped. I bought open the video, and my heart sank. It started right where I remember it starting, but there was one big difference. There was no house in front of me, just dense brush and a huge pile of bricks and wood the remains of the home. I scrolled through two hours of footage of me just standing there, staring straight ahead at nothing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I scrolled through the video, and it was over three hours of me just staring into the darkness. I scrolled towards the end of the video, before some movement finally caught my eye. The end of the video consisted of me slowly pulling up my shirt as I slowly dragged the knife across my stomach as I let out grunts of pain. After doing this, I dropped the knife and sprinted back towards the boat with a sudden panic in my breath before the video cut off. For several hours of the drive, I just sat in silence, unable to comprehend all that had just happened. Even when Rachel took over the driving, I wouldn't let myself fall asleep in fear of another nightmare. I didn't want to tell her, and I hoped she was too tired to even remember me showing it to her. After the long, 17-hour drive was finally over, we started to unload our stuff from the car. Rachel was gathering up all of her things, while I started to haul in the larger pieces of luggage into the home. I walked into the house and sat down all of the luggage I was carrying. I felt a sense of unease take over. The air was thick and heavy, and the house was freezing cold. I reached for the doorknob to my room and felt my heart stop. Just beyond my door, I could hear the faint sound of a woman sobbing. Great little story there. Hope you love that one. Um, brought back a lot of memories of my time near Lake Ontario. Uh, never experienced anything like that, but wow, we used to have a lot of fun out there. Uh, no TV, nothing like that. Just an old radio. We used to listen to the, uh, the golden age of radio. Suspense and things like that. Good times, good times. My dear friends, that's it for me for this evening, but you know I'll be back again on Friday with another fantastic story for you. You're going to join me, aren't you? Yes, you are. <laughs> Okay, see you all again real soon. Bye for now. Bye bye.
Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?